Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under <laughs> once again. Uh, it was my hope to take the day off from reporting about the Arctic and about all of this stuff, but uh, rapidly moving events make that impossible. Um, I'm very grateful to meteorologist Nick Humphrey for getting a video out late last night to alert folk to a major storm that, in its effects, looks as though it could dwarf the major cyclone in 2012 that so decimated the previously intact sea ice. Uh, because uh, even if it's not as strong as that storm, uh, the effects will be greater because the ice is in dreadful shape. Um, as of 18 hours later, I've seen nothing about this storm. Uh, either on the media or on social media. Nobody's talking about it. Surprising, one might think, given the possible significance of this storm for the entirety of humanity. Uh, but then again, uh, no media is even mentioning uh, the huge wildfires uh, in Angola and Congo, except for a uh, one... Um, uh, climate change denying site uh, Zero Hedge has written an article just come out in the last hour or so. Out of sight, out of mind. So here are a couple of the latest views from Earth Knoll School that I think are about uh, three hours apart and show the storm advancing onto the Canadian archipelago. Uh, so this is this is the latest data that we have and it shows uh, um, winds of up to 67 kilometers per hour um, and uh, I've found that often uh, null school tends to sort of underestimate the uh, you know the wind the wind speeds whenever I've been looking at hurricanes and everything I've been wondering kind of what the problem was uh, so that was it and then uh, this is just I think it's three hours uh, earlier so that just shows the uh, progression I just went one sort of major space back I don't know what the time the time difference is so um, just for uh, reference uh, this is how things uh, uh, look today this is the latest information on the sea ice from the snow and ice center um, I couldn't get into the uh, US Navy site uh, today that provides a very very good and up-to-date uh, data on uh, ice thickness and concentration so um, it's going to be interesting how all of this looks in um, in two three four five days whenever uh, whenever it clears up again and we're able to see um, kind of what in fact has has uh, transpired. So as of now, um, the uh, it doesn't look too flash, does it? Uh, you know, uh, there's uh, there's not much sea ice extent uh, there, and this is a view of uh, uh, sea ice uh, concentration. So we're getting down to I don't know what that was. What it is, 30, 40, 50 percent, and we've just got these small areas uh, just between Greenland and the North Pole that is somewhere up towards uh, 100 percent um, uh, uh, concentration. So, uh, the first thing that I would like to look at is just a um, a view of the projected progression of the cyclone from infrared satellite images and then I'll go straight on to uh, some extracts uh, from uh, Nicholas Humphrey's uh, uh, video. see the intensification of the storm. This will be about uh, now or a little after now. It's already 
rapidly strengthening. And then by tomorrow, midday, it's going to be a sub 970 millibar low pressure system, which is really what you typically see out of huge ocean storms out in the middle of the open ocean. This is going to be right over the Canadian archipelago during the day, uh, Friday, with likely with uh, strong winds, uh, hurricane force wind gusts, potentially over parts of the archipelago and the marine waters, and very warm air being pulsed northward uh, Friday into Saturday over the central Arctic basin. So you have a combination of warm air and strong winds producing uh, high wave action and damaging sea ice in this area. So it's this very uh, impressive storm. See, this is the, the surface low, the surface uh, sea level pressure, the surface pressure. See the intensification of the system and it lingers into Saturday over the Arctic and lingers and lingers. So you have persistent winds over that area. You can see during the day Friday, there's some elevated um, significant wave heights in between the islands of the Canadian archipelago, probably in the range of looks like 10, maybe 10 to 16 or 10 to 18 feet. That's pretty intense. Some areas here. Um, and that obviously that would be occurring within the ice extent as well because you have lower concentration of ice so there'll be water splashing on top of blocks of ice chunks of ice ice that's quite thin in this area uh, much of the ice in the arctic right now is only a meter thick maybe two if you're lucky not very impressive at all but it's going to take a hit. It's going to take a big hit. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a significant storm, and it will certainly contribute to further losses of sea ice in the in the Central Arctic Basin in the next uh, three or four days. So is there something to watch? I mean, at this point, it, it appeared to be that the record low wasn't going to be set this year for sea ice extent. That was going to be probably a set, the second lowest or third lowest on the record, which would still it still be ridiculously impressive since it was just 2012 that the record was set. But given how uh, thin the ice is compared to what, what it was in 2012, the volume of ice is so much lower because of, you know, the overall or the thinness of the ice is so much lower. The volume is very low near or at record lows that any sort of big storm could probably do more damage than what the storm in 2012 did to the sea ice that caused the record low that year. So that's what we have to be concerned about. Uh, how much ice can this one storm destroy? Potentially other storms coming down the pike. Um, we just don't know. So we have to, you know, kind of hold on to our hats here. But yeah, I mean, we're going to be seeing, seeing more activity. And I mean, that, that storm that will be hitting the Arctic tomorrow. It basically just persists over, over the basin for days. It's a cutoff, what we call a cutoff low. It just sits there and just spins around and spins itself down. But of course, that'll be persistent wind and wave action and pumping of some warmer air, all of which can do, do further damage to the sea ice. Okay, well, that's all I have. I'm a meteorologist Nick Humphrey. Have a good Friday and a good weekend. Just as a footnote, uh, last night after I've
watched the video, I went on to NASA Worldview and I found this uh, more strange cloud formations. Um, this is on the northeast coast of um, Greenland on the 22nd of August, so just before the storm. Uh, so that always kind of uh, leaves with me suspicions that something else is going on as well. So I'm just going to, uh, uh, I'm not saying one way or the other, but I'm just going to compare that with some photographs. Uh, this is, these are uh, um, recorded by Dane Wigginton of Geoengineering Watch. Uh, I mean, you have to, my, my partner says these look like clouds that have had a comb pass through them or uh -huh, perhaps uh, electromagnetic frequency might be uh, more apt. So uh, with all of these events, um, there are questions to be asked and it's more um, than we'll ever know probably. So, and that's as far as I'm going to take it uh, for now. So this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.